Many instances of paranormal phenomena have been reported in this desolate place. Events that may reflect the area's tragic past. Welcome back to Other Dangerous Podcast, where we talk all things paranormal. I'm Ken James, and this is Jason McKittrick. Hey, folks. And if it can haunt, Hal, or dwell in the dark, we want to talk about it. So here we are, gang, episode 40, and tonight we are bringing you Ghosts of Fukushima. But before we get into that, we're going to send it over to Jay for tonight's jump scare. Alrighty, thanks, Ken. Uh, got a fun little one from uh, Kathleen from uh, Cranford, New Jersey. Oh, you know so, Sort of. Not really close to where I live, but same okay. state. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Kathleen says, uh, A tall tree once stood on Gallows Hill Road in Cranford, providing small creatures with a place to nest and find shelter from bad weather. This right. particular tree, however, mm-hmm. also served another role during the Revolutionary War. Ooh. It was a site of many hangings of British spies captured by American troops. Although the tree was cut down in recent years, a section of the concrete and iron gate post where the ropes were tied still marks the spot. Uh, local residents say that late at night, they've seen movement around a shadowy tall shape that bends before a non-existent wind, its branches still bearing the weight of those who spied against America for the English as they received the ultimate punishment. Hmm... I like those those old timey ones. I like those local haunts, like yeah. those, you know, you tell the kiddos around the, uh, yeah. the campfire, Watch like out oh, for that tree. yeah, there used to be a tree here that they hung these Brits from. Yeah, and we'll do it to you. Too. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Yeah, yeah. Whoop! Yeah, there goes the head. We just <laughs> we just missed it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, tonight we are we're going back to uh, Japan for some some spooky wet fun. <laughs> well, before we go to Japan, what are we doing today, buddy? Today we're we're drinking Miller High Life. We're recording live Yay! together. We're in the same room drinking Miller High Life, recording live together. It's been a bit. Ooh, it has been a bit. We have been, you know, just uh, busy as F and apologize for the delay. Um, but it happens. Life, bro. Life, bro. Yep. Yeah, tonight we're going to be uh, tackling the ghosts of Fukushima. Fukushima. Uh, this year is actually the 10th anniversary, if you're not familiar with mm. uh it was a, uh, a magnitude 8.9 earthquake in northeastern Japan triggered a massive tsunami that mm-hmm. led to a meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi n- uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, ten years since radioactive materials from the plant poured into the air and the ocean and began making its way toward the west coast of the United States. Um, if you're not familiar, this was huge, huge news. This was like, uh, you know, the biggest disaster since uh, Chernobyl. Many uh, thousands, many thousands of lives lost. But uh, we're not here to talk about the, you know, uh, the details of the uh, disaster as much as we're to talk about the, kind of a, a ghost infestation. Yeah. Yeah, they were, they were plagued with ghosts. They had an, a ghost epidemic. Yeah, they have a ghost epidemic going on right now. Um, it's, it's pretty fucking nuts. And uh, there's a lot of stories around it. There's um, ghosts are different in Japan. Yes. Ghosts are very, very different in Japan. And I don't know exactly why that is. Okay, well, for tonight's episode, we've pulled a lot of, you know, right from the top here, we put a lot of info, info from the book Ghosts of the Tsunami, Death and Life in Japan's Disaster uh, Zone by Richard Lloyd Parry. Now, this book kind of aimed to, like, answer that question. Why okay. there's ghosts are so embedded in Japanese culture, and it's, it's, it's just an accepted part. And I guess the long, I guess kind of the, the short answer is that for them, what they believe, you know, you know, Westerners looking on, you know, from the outside in, that ghosts are kind of like an expression of grief because they're such a closed-in culture emotionally mm-hmm. that they see these ghosts as a way to um, express their grief. Like it's right. almost it's happening psychosomatically. Okay. Or the town is just lousy with ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, it, it, it gives you... Uh, it was something like... It was a little over 19,000 people were killed in the tsunami. 
So that's a lot of ghosts. That's a lot of ghosts. So and water we've talked about before. Yes, 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 yes. Death yes, in, yes. death involved with water or any kind of um, paranormal, you know, happenings occurring near water. So all these thousands of people killed, swept away mm. by mm. water creates this kind of, you know, one, once again, one of these great kind of like, you yeah. know, areas where ghosts kind of just, I don't know, it's, it's a spawn point for ghosts. Right. And if you think, it, it, yeah, like, and, and of course, with the, the quickness and the most tragic and the high energy of 19,000 people, you mm-hmm. know, mostly the elderly <laughs> getting swept out to sea, you know, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. And how quick and, and scary and. I mean, I I don't mean mostly. I mean, that was the highest number was the elderly. But, you know, there are some really spooky stories, Mm -hmm. including uh, one, even one, including one particular young lady who gets in the back of a cab Mm -hmm. that are, you know, it's almost it's 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 very Japanese. But at the same time, it's almost like, you know, a Japanese version of the famous like Resurrection Mary story right, right? where, you know, Ghost of a girl gets in, you know, um, asks to go wherever her destination is. And then, you know, at some point in the story, the guy will figure out that, you know, she's dead. Yeah. But this one is great because it's she gets in and, and almost immediately asks, am I dead? No. Oh. Yep. And then oh. and I think the cab driver noticed that it was, you know, she had a wet coat, even though it wasn't raining out. Yeah. So and that's another thing that, that occurs with these ghost sightings here. It all revolves around water or wet things like. <sighs> Uh, there was the one guy we were, uh, that said that you know he he's afraid of the rain because uh, he sees the the faces of the dead in the puddles. Oh. I mean that's that's so like it's it's so it's so <laughs> it's so cinematic. Yeah, yeah, and it's specific. It's <laughs> yeah. so specific. Yeah. You know, it's like those Japanese they're good storytellers and they don't even realize it some of the times. It's just like a part of them. I think, um, and you know, the two of us have had you know lots of uh, you know contact with Japanese culture, so it's right. like. They, I think they make everything very personal to themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like they come out with these like very personal ghost stories, which, however, it comes about. You know, like we said in episode like one, we're not here to judge. We're just yeah, here yeah. To, to just tell the stories. So it's kind of like, you know, they, it, where does that all come from? And you know, that's where this kind of the, the book that I was pulling from kind of tries to answer. Right, and, and but their their way of like talking about ghosts and like experiencing them, it it's super like. I don't let's not say influential just yet let's say like it's they're they're very stylistic you know and sure. like and that bleeds through in, into like how now you know it's trickled into our culture like movies like the grudge and mm-hmm. and, and things like that where it's like he, here's where you you can't I don't want to say that like their experiences of ghosts like I don't want to say it's fake because we know what their kind of ghosts are, but it hasn't trickled over here. You know, we're not right. All, like a, a, any American ghost story is very American and the, it's ghost story. Whereas right. the Japanese ghost stories are very Japanese. You're like, oh, like someone will read you a ghost story. You're like, all right, that's a Japanese ghost story. Yeah, like a woman's it, head with the intestines flying. You know, like yeah, what? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Japanese. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> long black hair over her face. Yeah, Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. 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 Oh well. You know, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's um, it, it's certainly interesting, but it, it continues to this day where it's like if you go to this area, which it's still in the, uh, an exclusion zone, but it's from what I understand, people are starting to people are coming back, right? So, um, well, with people, that cab driver, yeah, didn't he drive? The, he dropped her off of the one of those zones. Yeah, so he like he <sighs> was outside of it, and she wanted to be dropped off there. So it's like people are coming back. I know like people are like restaurants were starting to open. People were starting to come back a little bit. But like they said, like young people are not coming back because they're afraid to have kids there because, yeah. you know, they're so close to the, uh, the radiation. Yeah. Which there's haven't been any deaths attributed to it because it wasn't like a huge thing. But it's it was more the tsunami that really just did. the Yeah. Thing. So it's just kind of like, you know, they get a two for one special here. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then that was a question I, I was going to say for the podcast. But like. Do you think radiation opens a little bit of something up? Well, I mean, if it does, I don't think it's a factor in this story. Okay. Because there's almost there's almost none that like even speak of. They're saying that it's like yes, it, this did happen, but like it's not. They don't think it's a factor. That, like, right. I mean, maybe we won't know until another fifteen years from now. I mean, it, it's been ten years and there hasn't been anything uh, you know associated with it. Yeah. I mean, um, I like. I, I, 
do you gotta but like does that there's like the, like a uh, you know getting bombed you know or a nuclear explosion right or anything like that does that does that increase paranormal activity it has to increase some I, I mean it it certainly could I mean that would that seems to be the result here because we have all these like you know armies of ghosts um, so it's it's just what it is yeah. but um it's interesting because you have the, like you know reports of like people seeing you know lines of ghostly figures just standing in a line. It's like what? Uh, like waiting patiently outside like the rubble of a building. Like wh- what was that? Like was this like were they swept away like and they were waiting for like McDonald's? Like what, yeah. what, what happened here? You know what I mean? Um, that could be like like just like a Japanese interpretation of like showing you how many there were. You know? Well, according according to a couple stories that um, that one was outside of what used to be a supermarket. Okay. So it's like people waiting to pay for their food. They're like, God, I just want to get out of line, and they just swipe, they just swept yeah, away by that, a tsunami. That, that one, sucks. That would say like that would lean towards it's, it has a residual kind of effect, whereas some of them seem more kind of intelligent. Like the one, am I dead? You know, like. Yeah. And if it was, they're all standing in a line because, like, they're like, you know, this is how you know we represent how many there are of us here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at look at this with your Japanese brain. <laughs> It's a line, and there's us. There's a lot of uh, us. Maybe. I mean, who, who's to say? I mean, but they, those those ghosts are Japanese, yeah. so maybe they're like, you know, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, very respectful, you know. But it is it is interesting because it kind of correlates because the places where people say they see ghosts are like largely the areas that were completely swept away by the tsunami. So it's like there's some places where there's houses that still stand, but the ones that are just like just gone, that's where they seem to you know manifest the most. It's so weird. Yeah. So, uh, one survivor uh, was quoted as saying, uh, We think phenomena like ghost sightings are perhaps a mental projection of the terror and worries associated with those places. Which, yeah, I think that's probably appropriate for any haunted area. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he, he said one explanation was those who had witnessed the destruction firsthand and lost those in the terror that followed could be suffering from PTSD. That's another thing here, that they're like, you have this whole area of people that lost all these thousands of people that they're kind of, you know, suffering from, you know, this uh, this affliction because, hey, the count was here one day and the next day and it's gone. So yeah. it's like, how do you deal with that? Well, I mean, maybe it's like a... a There's ment- something still there, you know. Yeah, I, and like maybe it's just, you know, whether it's paranormal or it's not, but like, you know, you could certainly say it could be something to the degree of like, oh, it's it's a way of like honoring them. Yeah. You know, by saying like, oh... Oh, they're still here. Yeah. 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 So... Um. Yeah, it's it's a nutty situation, and like like we said, there's something about Japanese ghosts where it's just like they have this this style to them, and it just you can always recognize when it's come from Japan. <laughs> yeah, because there are some wacky aspects they get into too. With some, especially the uh, old school Japanese ghost stories. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's another one that I that I really liked. Um, an older gentleman uh, who um, <clears throat> lived there his entire life. Uh, went to the town uh, afterwards and salvaged these two, like, not giant, but two large Buddha statues from a temple that got destroyed. Mm-hmm. And he brought them back to his house. Yikes. As soon as he brings them back, strange occurrences start happening. <laughs> Noises, ghostly images. Um, he, he claimed that his two children suddenly got sick and an inexplicable chill seemed to follow the family through the house. Oh, now, come on. Uh, a, a couple of, he says... Um, a couple of times I, when I was lying in bed, I felt something walking across me, stepping across my chest. Ah. Yeah, that's Japanese. Yeah, that's right? so Japanese. Right? Uh, the worried dad, along with many others in the aftermath of the tsunami, felt there was only one place he could turn. An exorcist. Yeah. Okay, yes. so I don't yes. know if you heard about this this woman. Uh, Kanshu Aizawa? Kanshu Aizawa, I think that's her name. Uh, has helped countless families deal with ghosts following the tsunami and says she has seen many apparitions herself. She's this... (laughs) Buckle up, folks. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) She explained, there are headless ghosts and some missing hands or legs. Others are completely cut in half. Yeah. Uh, People were killed in so many different ways during the disaster and they were left like that in limbo, so it takes a heavy toll on us. We see them as they were when they died. The problem of the visions of ghostly figures be- became so severe in certain areas that taxi drivers were in fear of picking up specters instead of living passengers. So that must have happened a lot. It, mo- it, it must have. Uh, and it's, and I think that's, that, that has something that connects with it. Like, 
when I said before, like Japanese make it very personal to yeah, themselves. Right. Like, here's a cab driver. This ghost sighting is going to become a part of his daily job. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like there's something yeah. very personal about ghost stories with them where well, it's like very like intricately yeah. and, 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 and like inexorably linked to whatever they're doing. Yeah, because, yeah, like, so they're like, you know, they, they very, you know, everything's like regimented, you know, like they uh-huh. you know, get up, breakfast, bathe in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, get up, breakfast, you know, soak yourself in freezing cold water. <laughs> Whoa, get, Tom Cruise. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, they you know they're very very schedule oriented and like right. they're like there's gonna be some ghosts in my way today fucking yeah so you know it's it's just gonna happen you know and I'm gonna have to brush them off or I love I love how most of them like like even when you see like them in interviews talking and they're like you know it was absolutely terrifying yeah and they're like it was horrifying mm-hmm. but I still dropped them off. You know, like well, I that's still, his job. Yeah, they, they, you know, it's. Yeah, you know, I still honored them. You know, they didn't yeah. pay me, but he needed to get where he was going. And they bowed hey, the whole time while saying it. Exactly. I mean, because what is it like the the uh, Tokyo um, subway has Drift? never been oh, no no the Tokyo subway has never been late in fifty years. Like that's the culture we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Right. Like, um, so immediately after the tragedy, people sought the exorcist's help to make sure they their loved ones were happy in the afterlife. But that changed as time went on. <laughs> Um, famous like la- but that changed this so Aizawa said at first people came here uh, wanting to find the bodies of their family members then they wanted to find out exactly how that person died and if their spirit was at peace they've started wanting to transmit their own message to the dead I guess that's where she comes in uh, is this now is this lady like uh, Sylvia Brown I want to say she's a cross between like Sylvia Brown and John Edward okay. and Yoko Ono Ah, right. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, okay. I can picture... Not the- because they're both Japanese, but because of, like, the nobody asked you to come here kind yeah. of, kind yeah. of <laughs> like, vibe. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, if you watch the Get Back documentary, you know exactly what Oh, yeah, what I, I, gotta finish, I gotta finish, I gotta finish. <laughs> um, so, back to the previous guy. Um, his problems ended when he built a shrine for the two uh, Buddhist statues, and he regularly prays for them. And as soon as he did that, yeah. nothing. See, now that's that's what kind of leans me towards that that's like... Their own guilt and grief. Right. So, exactly. So it was like, here was his guilt and grief over the whole thing. He kind of put some positive energy into it. Yeah. Put these statues in, you know, you know, reset them up. They're in, his, they're in his backyard, apparently, in a shrine. And he prays for them. And now, like, his own mental anguish yeah. is kind of like, you know... But who's to say that's not what will actually trigger a paranormal event? You know what I mean? It could be his own in- internal shit... Because a lot of that here, you know, all the sadness and anger usually triggers paranormal events. Sure. Well, I I think if there's any certainty to what triggers a paranormal event is that there is no certainty. Right. I, like, it's almost like it's just when it happens, it just kind of happens. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any kind of perfect formula. Because, like, for years people would have yeah. said, oh, well, if someone has a violent death and they have unfinished business, there's going to be a ghost. It's like, well, then where's all the ghosts at the World Trade Center? Right. Like, right. they're just not there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if that was going to happen, it would have happened yeah. some place like yeah. that. Yep. So it's like, who knows how it works, if it works. If yeah. it's, You know what I'm saying? If we're just wasting our time. Right. With this whole thing. Oh, no, we're not wasting our time. <laughs> we're hanging out, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that's true. we got a whole 24-pack of uh, High Lives to yeah, tell. Yeah, that's true. So we were going to be talking about this shit anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> so just like we but said, do you, the, do you ever think of that? Like, what's that? Like, because we've been interested in this our whole lives, right? Yeah. Do you? Ever, are, you ever, are you ever like, man, am I interested in something that's fake? Like, am I? Do we really want to go down this rabbit hole? No, no, not right now. No. I mean, we're 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 floating on a you know a grain of sand well, in the endless oceans of space. Yeah, we might be. Uh, what we talk about know, is irrelevant anyway. Yeah, we might be floating <laughs> in a, on a turtle's back, and you know. All in his dream, always sunny reference. But anyway, um, oh, I thought you were going for the um, uh, what we do in the shadows reference because that was Nandor, also yeah, the turtle. Yeah, yeah. The always sunny was like season seven when that <clears throat> okay. happened, but okay. or like twelve. But uh, shout out to Nandor. Like, shout you, out to Nandor, the rel- yeah, Nan- relentless. Yeah, Nandor is the, the man. The man. Uh, glad he get you know got his teeth back. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have a little before we get too far. Uh, me bringing that up, like, oh, you know, maybe we're not believing anything. There's always, we always <clears throat> have those experiences that bring us right back to what the fuck was that? And you just had one, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we had one. Um, <sighs> yeah, I guess we could just go into this now. Um, <clears throat> so, I guess we've been talking about that since like the first episode. Like, my house is haunted. Like, mm-hmm. it just is. It's not, it's not malevolent. It's not even, I don't even know if it's intelligent, if that's even a thing, like we've said before. Yeah. But um, we kind of had the most chilling one ever. 
Uh, this was December 23rd. So, obviously, preparations for Christmas. Uh, me and my wife are home. We're wrapping presents. Um, kids are at school because that's when you have to wrap presents. Yeah. And um, we're upstairs. And this is, you know, our upstairs is, you know, it's, it's a decent sized room or whatever. But um, we're just going about what we're doing. And um, in the room, the voice of an older woman said, hello? Just that loud. And then Christina looked at me and I looked at her and like, it was so scary that like we, you were afraid to move. We were just like, cause we were waiting for the like, next thing. Yeah. We we're like, what the fuck? So like, I, I run over to the windows. I look down, I look outside. There's nobody out there. there it, it, the voice was in the room. Mm-hmm. So there's no mistaking like, oh, was that from outside? Like, you know, we're in a house. Yeah. We don't, we, you know, there's nobody upstairs or anything. It's not an apartment, nothing like that. Uh, the two neighbors to the to the to the left and right of us are gone for the year. They 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 come back in the summer. Uh, the lady next door to us um, has a very heavy Korean accent, so I would have been able to um, identify her voice. It's very hard not to try to do an impression right now. Please don't. But I'm not going to. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag canceled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other neighbor um, is a guy who lives by himself who works nights, so he was asleep. Yeah, no random broad from his place. So know, even got lost in your bedroom. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it was just we're sitting there wrapping presents, and then hello, and it was you could tell you could tell it was an older woman's voice. It had like a little bit of a rasp to a it. Little like grizzle. She, she may have been a smoker. Like little, that. it was a little grizzle in there. A little bit. A little bit. A little, little bit. And it was fucking terrifying. Um, Christina was like, "Yeah, I'm done." She went downstairs and. Um, you know, she was like, I'm not sleeping up here tonight. I was like, okay. She's like, right. she's like, you're okay with sleeping upstairs? I was like, it's my house. Yeah. Fucking sleeping yeah. Of course. And one of the biggest questions I always ask was something like that. What was the temperament? I remember I asked you and you were just like... Inquisitive. inquisitive. Like, inquisitive. it was literally like a person. Here's what... I sat there and chewed on it for a little while. And I was like, you know what? It was almost like... Um, it was almost like... There was like two layers of reality happening. Like, she came upstairs in a different time. Her and was like, guys, who are these two yeah, people yeah. upstairs? Hello? That's what I think it was. Ah! Uh, you like that? Ew. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you That's, experienced the multiverse. I don't know if I experienced the multiverse, <laughs> but, like, if time really is a flat circle. <laughs> um, you don't get to interrupt that. You don't get to interrupt that. Yeah, so that's... um. That's my conclusion. I mean, what kind of conclusion can I really have? But um, so yeah, that was my uh, that was my conclusion on it. I mean, for now, until the next thing happens. But that was yeah. the most overt thing that's happened since we moved in. Because the first thing that happened when we moved in, Christina saw the first thing was the guy who she said I saw somebody go in the front door, and then when I came in to check, because she's like, I, go look. Yeah. She's like, because I don't know why anyone needs to be in there. I opened the door and there was a woman talking. And as soon as I opened the door, it stopped. Like yeah. I heard the tail end of it. Yeah. I. This was over three years ago, so I can't tell you if it was the same voice. Yeah, but um, I mean, something. Well, that's the that's the fucked up thing because you're you're saying the like the two parallel. Well, th- well, he- here we go. That's that's kind of like what kind of like reinforces it. When I opened that door, maybe in her time, the door opened and she stopped talking. Like, what was that? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And like you hearing all those voices in the closet. Yeah, could be people. Whoever is up there at other whatever time. Yeah, whenever this is happening. Um. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my little uh, fuck. That's fuck. my little story from a uh, little, little little Christmas ghost story yeah, for you. Christmas ghost story, man. The season's greetings. Just getting getting all up in your face. Nothing happened since you know this is this, this is the twenty third. So this was last week. This is right. um, you know, five days ago. Yeah, so this was last week. So this was last week, and uh, nothing else has happened. And it's just so, so random, man. It, it is. is random. It is appropriate because it is. It is always random. There, I, I at first I was like, oh, I was trying to like get this like correlation because I was like, at first I thought there was like some correlation between like thunderstorms. And yeah, it. I was like, yeah. Right before thunderstorms, I'm sorry. Like right after or right around thunderstorms is when it would happen. And then the, the storm would move out and it would like dissipate. And then I mean there might be something to the correlation with thunderstorms, but I, I really don't know. So it just happens. It's my face looked like that. <laughs> Sorry, we're watching the grudge in the background. Yeah. 
my face looks like that right now. No, but um, <laughs> uh, so back to uh, where we were. I had to just get that in there because I was sure. You know, we're we're dealing with how the Japanese process their ghost stories. Well, it, it, it's it, it's it works because yeah, we're talking about I'm an American and yeah. there's an American ghost story and here's these Japanese ghost stories. This doesn't fit into anything. There's not some kind of like grief on process. I mean, there is, but this has nothing to do with it because this has taken place before there were deaths and things. So it's yeah, it's not that. So it's like, um, it just is like the place just it's haunted. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Like just have we been said in many yeah. previous episodes. I don't know what that means, but it is. Maybe and you're just on like some like fault lines that are intersecting. It was into built a, on ley lines. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe yeah. uh, I don't think so, but um, then no there's synchronicity. The, then then yeah. there's then there's the interesting uh, the interesting idea that there's a grave in the side yard. Where did that? Who was that? Your idea? Whose idea is that? Well, here's something that here's something that um, really fucked with me like a week ago. Okay? And which side yard are we talking? So I know. And okay, you know where the fire pit is? Yeah. You know that dip. Yeah. That's the grave. Okay. Okay. And let me tell you, I got a, a little just. This is like an uncorrelated piece of information that really fucked me up. Okay. So, did we talk about this on the podcast before? The the the, the hole that looks like a grave. No. All right. So everyone. All right. So in the side yard, there's 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 like the sinkhole, that's the shape of a grave, mm-hmm. and every year it's getting deeper. Some people have suggested since that this area had damage from Hurricane Sandy because I'm, I'm like a block from the water, so people were like, oh well, maybe that's just people that i've told come over the house like that could be a um somebody buried a um an oil an oil drum or something and now it's collapsing because that does happen I mean, yeah that, that's that's legit or it could be some kind of older like uh septic system or something yeah. like yeah. something to that degree and now it's finally rotting and it's sinking yeah um but this is an old area the town is an old town i mean it's the town predates the united states it was a town before you know it was it was you know it was a it was a town before the revolution, so um, <laughs> it's like five to six feet long, oblong. Mm-hmm. And f- since we moved in, we're like, oh, that's the body. Don't worry, that's the grave. That's the body. Um, and I was watching a show the other day, and I was like, oh, traditionally in Christian burials, um, they're they're situated from east to west. Guess what? This hole is situated in east to west. Dead east to mm. west. And I'm sitting there mm. watching it on my computer, and I could see the side yard from my office window. I'm like this. I'm like, <laughs> D- dude. I don't mean like sort of east yeah. west. It's like like Egyptian measurement yes. east to west. Yeah, because it is. I mean, because the wo- like <laughs> that's fucked up. Uh, yeah. So okay. So now we know. We know some more. We know a little more. It's like it's like it's it's unraveling as time goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that uh, means. I don't know if that's. But hey, I'm 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 not trying to correlate all these things, yeah. but they're doing it themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Eesh. and you know what? Like, I'm imagining like the day you like when you guys started moving in, mm-hmm. like when you're like getting prepared, like the first dip happened. You yeah, know? and that's what started the activity. Yeah, is like it finally like breaking. Yeah, it's like know? the monkey's paw. Finger goes yeah. down every time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Oh man. And then yeah, the closer it gets, you know, the deeper it goes, the more stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah, so it's um, it's it's the deepest it's been now. Because then I was looking because we had people over for Christmas. I was like, watch the hole. They're like, and my one cousin was like, Jesus. He's like, I thought this thing was just like a little dip. I was like, it's getting deeper. Yeah. And then my one buddy, who's you know, he's just like, whatever. He's like, you, you should get this checked. He's like, get a get a metal detector. He's like, just see what this is. Because yeah. he's like, oh, it's probably just an old oil um, drum that yeah. the, you know when it was on oil heat because the house is from the fifties. Yeah. So. The old human-sized oil drum. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's what's going on there. Yeah, and I, you know what's funny? I mean, it does kind of correlate because you're on the water, and this, this this is what we started talking about in Fukushima. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know the because um, like that that neighborhood. It was a few years before we moved there, but that neighborhood was hit by Sandy, like mm-hmm. hit by Sandy. You can go on YouTube and look up some videos of houses just being like ripped apart. <gasps> I don't know about the death toll. If there right. was, you know, anything significant. I don't think there was. I think it was only in the teens, teens, <laughs> preteens, teens. Um, <sighs> Whoa. Was that uh, Calvin spine over there? Brought to you by Calvin spine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's that's what's going on, um, 
and I think it's almost like you know, as Americans, we have ghost stories. They're like, oh, those are fun things to tell at you yeah. know parties and like to your weird friend, like what yeah. we're doing right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should call this your weird friend podcast yeah. if we ever have to rebrand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then in Japan, they make it a very deeply personal thing there where it's like almost like a thing in their life that they have to overcome to get to the next point in their life, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, and it's very regimented, just like the way of their kind of like their, their culture. But it's um, I guess there could be some correlations between these two stories. Yeah, uh, maybe. And I, I, you know what, though, it's funny, though, that it might be. You know, it's like the, the, it's something they have to get over in their life. Mm-hmm. But they can all. They also. It's a little built-in scapegoat for like. Oh sure. He never got it fully together because he never got over the haunt that ghost that haunted him of that. You know. Maybe, but I don't. There's not much sympathy for that in Japan, from what I understand. Yeah, I'm not. I, well, they don't have. I'm, what I, I mean, it's like it's used as an excuse. It's not like it's the sympathy. Okay. It's more of just like never got over it. You know, close the close the door on it. Okay. Okay. Hey, I, hey, I mean. Uh, but I would think that 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 could possibly be the issue here too. I mean, there's t- right. there's, there's certainly people that'll tell you like, "Oh, my house is haunted. I can't go in there, and like my life is in chaos, and I can't get anything fixed." There's a lot of that. Yeah. 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 Well, most of those people are on the dead files. <sighs> the fucking mental issues on that show. It's mostly people with you know. We're not here to judge, Ken. Help mental health we're just, issues. We're just, we're just here to... We're not the mental health podcast. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> that was just an observation from old hey, Kenny Boy. Hey, there may be an... There most likely is a correlation between mental illness and a lot of paranormal activity. A lot of it. A lot of it. Uh, but, like we've said in many previous episodes, there's the there's that, you know, that 1%. Mm-hmm. And in that 1% lives... The good shit. The good stuff. So... This is going to be King Breathing podcast the whole time. Oh, I'm that's not a ghost? Stop. That's not Muncher? No, no that's not Muncher. <laughs> Although he looks just like him. Stop. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean Another Dangerous it, Podcast brought to you by hip dysplasia. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is there is there any other like nice little little tidbit stories from Fukushima? Um, honestly, I think the, 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 the real... I don't know. I don't know the the real the nut of it right at the center yeah. the, uh, is that this seems to be like like we said the, the town became this focal point for grief in the country right and so when people go back there or there's people who go out there just to see this because you know you have legend tripping out there mm-hmm. you know uh, uh, they go out there to check this place out and and they they see it like without fail they're like oh we go there ghosts yeah we go there right. ghosts but the author of the book who I was talking about. An American guy who's lived in Japan for 18 years knows the culture. He's like, I'm, I've never seen anything there. Yeah. So there is definitely a cultural component. Just like, I mean, it's not a ghost story, but just like uh, the chupacabra, right? Right. Only showed up in Spanish-speaking countries. Right. So there's something about a, you know, there's a cultural element there. Yeah. You know. And hey, I love it. Like yeah. I want this stuff to exist. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah. But there's there there's something has to be said about the cultural component to all this because there is definitely something about that and I love it. Yeah. So <laughs> those Japanese man, they they really got an iconic thing going on there with their ghosts and I mean, like I said, it's bled its way over here and I just that's the thing you think like you were just saying like with the chupacabra and only in Spanish speaking countries like. Mm-hmm. That's what leads me to be like, okay, is it real? Well, we could say because it hasn't bled over that it isn't. And mm-hmm. then we could say it hasn't bled over because it is. You know? It, I, it's I, weird. I, and I'm going to sound like I'm wearing a tinfoil hat. But, um, like, after experiencing the weird stuff in my house and me mm-hmm. talking about, like, maybe there's layers of time somewhere. Yeah. What's reality? All right. Right? I mean, do we? I mean, you can't even go down that rabbit hole because then we'll start, you know. Would even talk about it at that point, but yeah. like you know what I mean, like it, it's it seems to skirt that area. Yeah, you know? it, it just it scrapes by that kind of area. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and, and we you try to keep it in the fun area, the fun part of it. You know, you keep it in the fun area because I think, yeah, I'm not going to go down. Never mind, because this is not the mental health podcast. But um, <laughs> put it this way. So tell us, Doctor Jason. <laughs> uh, other dangers after dark. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, so there's a that's, um, that's a different podcast. Ooh, um, I thought we were gonna call that Damn Daddy. Yeah, that's Damn Daddy podcast. <laughs> so here, here, here's a little 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 story to, to to wrap this up because honestly, it's still going on today, and it's like, you know, it's it's like a thing. You it's see ongoing. It. It's ongoing. Um, 
So there's a, a gentleman, a, a Buddhist priest who lives in the village, has lived in the village since before the disaster. Um, all this stuff goes down, all these ghosts start appearing, mm -hmm. and he was doing their version of what an exorcism is. Um, he died of exhaustion because he was doing so many uh, exorcisms. So, I mean, you know, what does that mean? Are what people does just that mean? People just jumping on the bandwagon? Oh, I need one of those too. And he's I mean, just out I mean, there our ghosts, the our ghosts in Fukushima, an iPhone, like the iPhone is here. Everyone's got to have one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you get a ghost and an exorcism. That's a free exorcism with each demon possession. Now, my question. <laughs> My Whoa, question. Oh, I got demons. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Me. All right, Beetlejuice. But my, uh, my my big question about that too is, it's like, how many of these like priests? Like, you know, how we have the we have like the the psychics over here, you know, Oof, or like yeah. the clairvoyance. Yeah. How many priests or like you know shaman do they have that are doing the same thing? Well, I think like, you have. I think there's a, there's definitely a clear delineation between the two. You have the you know. The ones that are part of their clergy, and then you have, which I'm sure there's nuts in there too. Yeah, you know, and then there's this other lady, the Yoko Ono, who comes in there and she's seeing ghosts without heads, and you know, ghosts like playing, you know, doing bowling with with. Wait, did, did that she say that happened? She's got her big sunglasses. Yeah, she said that happened. Okay. Bowling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's ghost bowling, and yeah. there's. And then she said Paul was an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> It's like, okay. John's clearly the, the yeah. dickhead. No, John, John was a monster. Yeah. We're not going to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, so... Poor Julian Lennon. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, man. Mm. <sighs> Domestic abuse podcast. Uh, let's is. not. Let's not. Yeah, let's not, that. That. <laughs> let's not get into that. This will go yeah. off the rails further than it already in the has. Way, in the way, John, uh, you know, in, in the words of John Lennon, uh, time wounds all heels. Right. He said that, so... Um, anyway, <laughs> mm -hmm. Japanese ghost, Yoko Ono, and uh, the Beatles. Um, but I guess uh, closing statements on this? Closing statements? Um, yes. I'm going to pull this, the closing statements from um, a quote from a villager who okay. lived in, lives in Fukushima. And they have this, um, this tree in the middle of, of, the, uh, of the town called the Miracle Pine. It, for no reason, should have it survived. But it's one of these giant, like, pines that, like, mm -hmm. you know, that they have, like, you know, it's literally seen as almost like a, uh, I don't know, a divine thing because it's yeah. so big how they are about trees over there. And uh, it's become a, a symbol for the town. And it's, 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 so they say it's a symbol of something uniquely Japanese, hopeless heroism. And they, the, the guy called it, it's a single ronin fighting on regardless. Hmm. I like that. Yeah. The, sing the tree is a single ronin fighting on regardless. Yeah. I like right. that. Uh, my closing statement um, is probably going to have to be... Um, those Japanese are weird, man. <laughs> they got weird stories, and they regard <laughs> things in weird ways. Listen, let me tell you about weird Japanese. All right? Right now, it's oversaturation in my home, because all my kids, three girls, are all into anime now, and it's bad. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell them that this is not real anime. It's 40% crying, 60% reused animation. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Looking at you, My Hero Academia, and Ooh. others. Yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. Ooh. I had to go see that in the movies. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Demon Slayer's not so bad, but it's still I, that I, same... People are telling me to watch My Hero Academia, mm -mm. and I, mm -mm. I haven't. Mm -mm. I haven't, so... It takes... It's It, it takes a lot of things from, like, um, Dragon Ball, mm. all the good parts, mm -hmm. and makes it unbearable. Well, I'm still watching Dragon Ball Super, so I'm into that. But uh, all right, guys, <laughs> for, uh, thanks for this weird episode. Yeah, this is hey, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, we're just we're getting our sea legs back here. You yeah. know? Uh, but there was some cool stuff about you know Japanese culture we got in there. We got to hear a new Jago story uh, yeah. around Christmas time. It's the Japanese who go swimming with bow-legged women, right? Right? Or is it the dwarves? I was there, Gandalf. Okay. 100,000 million years ago. No, anyway. <laughs> All right, guys, for this episode of Other Dangerous Podcast, I'm Ken James. And I'm Jason McKittrick. And as always, have a spooky evening. Spooky. 
Thank you for listening to Other Dangers Podcasts. Have you encountered the other dangers? If so, you can email us at otherdangerspodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to have a discussion about the paranormal, you can find us at Other Dangers Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. There you can find submitted pictures, videos, and artwork from listeners. We are now streaming on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else podcasts are streamed. And after listening, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you the other dangers.